We're glad to have you back. Now, Nigeria scored lower than the global average of 45 out of 100 in the Open Budget Index ranking below Cameroon, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Syria, Luna, and Benin. According to the 2023 survey, despite a 24% global increase in transparency, Nigeria scored 31 in transparency, 19 in public participation, and 61 out of 100 in institutional oversight, resulting in an overall ranking of 92 out of 125 countries. According to experts, the government must take immediate actions to address the country's budget transparency issues. Well, let's get talking now. I'm being joined by Head of Research and Policy Analyst. He's with Budget. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Inyobong Hussein. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Hussein. It's good to see you. Yeah, good afternoon, Tolu, and good to see you again. How are you doing? Very well. Well, uh, looking at my introduction to this conversation, Nigeria is ranking below countries like Cameroon, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Syria, alone, and Benin. I'm not quite impressed with this. How did we get here? I mean, uh, yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, Nigeria made considerable progress between 2019 and 2021. So we moved from a, a score of 2021 to 45. But we declined to 31 again because certain documents that you know Nigeria often publishes, you know, in a timely manner, were were not published within you know uh, the last one year. Uh, if you look at the OBS uh, survey and what it seeks to assess, so there are about eight key documents that the OBS assesses. You know, they look at the the pre-budget document, uh, the executive budget proposals the enacted budget, citizens' budget, the in-year report, media uh, report, year-end report, and the audit report. And between the, the last time the survey was conducted, which was uh, 2021 and 2023, uh, we saw that the, the, public, the pub, uh, public disclosure of in-year reports, media reports, and audit, audit reports right, had declined. If you, if you go to the budget office website, for instance, the most recent budget implementation report that you would find is that for uh, Q1 2023. Now, mind you, the, the state governments have released their reports up to Q1 2024. Mm -hmm. So what, what it means is that for the last uh, one year, the federal government has not published you know, its budget implementation report. And what it means is for the, for the last one year, we have no clue as to how much revenue government has raised and how it has spent uh, those revenues. If you also look at the fiscal account of government that usually publishes on the Open Treasury portal, you would see that the most recent report that's published on that uh, portal is that for August uh, 2023. Uh, what that means is that uh, a lot of the gains that government has made in terms of savings from you know, the subsidy removal, from the uh, floating of the Naira, because you know we were, were, there was actually FX subsidy going on. All of that, we have not seen the numbers, you know, in terms of savings from those uh, two key reforms. On the expenditure side of things as, as well, as you know, on the supplementary budget, you know, in addition to the 2023 budget, we have no clue as to how exactly, you know, but the budget uh, that was enacted for 2023 and the supplementary budget has performed. And mind you, we are getting into the tail end of Q2, uh, Q2 2024. So it's because of this decline in you know, public disclosure of very key uh, documents like this that Nigeria slipped you know, uh, in the open budget uh, survey ranking as the case may be. Hmm. So I want to ask, Nigeria has got low now in what we've seen and um, there's a public participation. Now looking at the criteria, yes, you've identified them. 31 in transparency out of 100, 19 in public uh, participation, right? Did I get that? 61 out of 100 in uh, institutional oversight. Uh, now, what can we do, particularly with the public participation and audit? Tell us more how we can improve this. I mean, very important. Uh, it's very important that there are more opportunities for the, for the public to participate in how government, you know, carries on with its dealings. If we, if we take the you know, recent happenings with regards to the Lagos uh, Calabar uh, coastal road, you would see that a lot of things were done after the fact. Our government had gone ahead with procurement, which, you know, a lot of people have, you know, had issues with. 
with regards to how open, you know, with regards to competitive bidding, that process was, if there, there is even uh, allocation for, for that project in the budget, if, you know, there were uh, uh, environmental and social impact assessment done with regards to that project. It looked like everything was done behind a closed doors. And that's why you see a lot of backlash, a lot of people not really owning, you know, that, that project, even if it has significant economic, you know, sort of contributions to the economy. So it's important that at every stage, uh, you know, during the budget cycle, whether it's with the formulation of the budget, whether it's with enactment with regards to public hearing by uh, the National Assembly through several committees, whether it's with regards to implementation or uh, audit, as the case may be, that there are opportunities for the public to participate. And uh, what, does, what does transparency, what does opportunity to participate, you know, bring to governance? When there is increase in transparency, what it means is it, it arms citizens with, you know, uh, resident to be able to make informed political choices to contribute to the political process, contribute to how, you know, governance is carried out and to ensure that government doesn't abuse power. And we can only do this from an informed point of view. What informs us is this document that it put in the public domain for us to assess, you know, and, and, and give feedback. So it's, it's important that, you know, moving forward, that these documents that, you know, form, help us form uh, conversations, make, up, make us make informed or take informed positions on these issues, are in the public domain for scrutiny. And when it comes to uh, avenues for public participation, it is important that at the point of you know, formulating the budget that citizens' inputs are taken. As you know, the resources that we have to implement the budget, it's, you know, it's scarce. It's not, we don't have enough of those resources, meaning that government has to deploy it in such a way that we're able to maximize uh, those revenues in areas that improve the lives and livelihoods of people generally. If you come to audits, we have one of the weakest audit regimes in the world. Uh, the most recent audit report that we have is that for the 2020 fiscal year. Three years have gone by, and we do not know exactly how government, you know, has judiciously deployed resources. And I mean, this is a legacy issue. It, it's not tied to this present administration, but that is one that has stuck with us that three years after, you know, money has been spent, you know, by certain government agencies, there's no audit to check whether, you know, uh, there was impropriety in how government revenues were, you know, were, were deployed. There was a 500 billion Naira uh, intervention fund during the COVID year. And an audit was done on that. It was submitted to the Public Accounts Committee. Till date, that report is not public. And so we do not even know how that 500 billion Naira was deployed. And how do you, how do you check for these sort of occurrences, you know, with recent uh, public financial management dealings? It's important that these reports are uh, these audits are, are conducted timely and the reports are put in public domain so that citizens can have an idea of how these really mega resources that government raise, primarily through taxes, are spent judiciously. Mm. So uh, let me just take you to highlighting the positives of being transparent with dealings. What are the positives? Let's highlight them specifically. I mean, you get the buying of people. People are able to contribute to governance in the sense that uh, if you look at the federal government budget, for instance, there are about 20,000 or 23,000 capital projects, right? The federal government does not have the capacity to monitor the implementation of these projects. They require the beneficiaries like you and I, people in remote communities, to be able to give feedback on whether those projects were implemented at all, if they were implemented to specifications. And that, citizens can only participate in that process. Accountability actors like yourself, like myself, can only contribute to that process if the details are made available to the public. If you look at the 2024 budget, the manner in, in which it was uh, published in, you know, on the budget office website is in such a way that nobody can really make sense of it. You have over 2,000 pages of a document that are scanned, and nobody can really search. If, I, if you ask me today how many projects you know, are going to be you know, uh, implemented in Lagos or carried out in Lagos, it's difficult for me to check because these are scanned pages of documents. And it means that you have to go through the document page by page, line by line, to be able to you know, have a sense of what is going on. This, this is a deviation from the past. It's important that even in putting out uh, documents in the public, 
have it in machine. It's a machine uh, readable format. It's in a search searchable format that people can easily access these documents. They can make sense of it. They can triangulate the data and play their role as active citizens. And for them to be able to do that, like I said, the information has to be made available in public in a timely manner and in you know in in, in an accessible manner where it's machine readable and you know it's searchable as the case may be. Well, a bit away from the survey now, the issue of trust comes to my mind. Government and the people, the issue of trust, just like tax. I'm ready to pay my tax because I see what is happening in the state where I live. And, of course, I would also want to pay when I see what government is doing. What do you think about that relationship, that social contract between Nigerians and gov government at this time? It's very, it's very, transparency is very essential to the issue of trust. And I'll use the 2023 election as, as a very key example. A lot of people believed in the process because INEC had assured the general public that the results from each polling unit would be posted on the IREF portal in a timely manner. And that declaration alone led a lot of people to go to the polling units and cast their votes with the belief that their votes would count because they would see those results in a timely manner. They would see those micro results coming before you get to the, uh, to the uh, stage of collision where a lot of manipulation often you know, happens. So it's important for you know, government to be able to end the trust of, of Nigerians that they are transparent with all their dealings, that none of, you know, none of the dealings of government is opaque. And that's how you begin to end the trust of government. That's how people you know, uh, begin to contribute to, the, to you know, the, the, the process of governance. They, pay, they, they are able to pay taxes, and they expect that you know, in return, government is going to provide certain goods and services that makes their lives better. So uh, that transparency is that currency, you know, for government to end the trust of the people. I, and I would, I would urge government to continue to utilize that currency, you know, so that we're able to make, you know, considerable gains with regards to our development. Mm. So we expect another survey to come up when? And uh, do you think, or can you highlight, yes, uh, let me tell you to highlight that. What can uh, the president of uh, the government of President Bola Metinumbu do to revive this fiscal transparency and uh, take the nation forward at this time? Quickly, the budget implementation reports for the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter of 2023 needs to be released. So we have a sense of how you know money was spent. That for the first quarter of 2024 also needs to be released. The reports around you know what has been spent uh, with regards to the supplementary budget has to be put in, you know, in, in public. The fiscal accounts dating uh, when this government took over uh, till now, till the last month, which is May, needs to be you know, uh, in the public domain. If you, if you come to public participation as well, as the budget is currently being implemented, and you know, reports are submitted to the, uh, the different committees of the National Assembly, there needs to be opportunity for citizens, for accountability actors like that, to provide feedback opportunities for, for us to even hear from the oversight committees in National Assembly on how well the budget is performing. If I come to audit as well, we need to totally revamp our audit regime. There's currently uh, a federal audit service bill that is sitting, I think, before the Senate. The House of, uh, the House of Reps has passed it. And the importance of that bill is that it grants uh, financial and operational autonomy, autonomy to the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. That's one bill that is very uh, important, right, to the smooth running of, of that office to ensure that whatever resources are deployed, right, through the instruments of state, are deployed judiciously and in such a way that citizens can get value for money. So it's important that that bill gets speedy passage in the Senate and then the, the president attends to it. And then we quickly operationalize those, uh, that bill so that our audit can be conducted in a timely manner you can get those reports out in a timely manner, and then citizens and other accountability actors can now engage those audit reports to ensure that wherever you know corruption has happened, wherever uh, you know uh, people have embezzled money, that we are able to call them out and hold them accountable. Hmm. Budget are uh, always doing so much work with regards to uh, all of this in-depth uh, analysis. Uh, what more should we be expecting? Uh, from budget. Now, this is analyzing this report, but one more are you going to be looking at uh, as we move on in the year? So beyond, beyond the, uh, the, this, this survey that looks at the federal government, yeah. budget, 
But it also conducts a similar survey for the subnationals. We call it the Fiscal Transparency League. Yeah. So people can look out, you know, uh, look out for how their states are performing with regards to, you know, the release of public financial, you know, documents. Uh, that's the survey we do uh, at the subnational level. I mean, as you know, we track uh, we we track, you know, the implementation of of government projects across the 36 states of the federation. You know, citizens can go to budget websites to, you know, also contribute, track projects in your communities. We also have the state of state coming up. That state of state is a fiscal assessment of, you know, the comparative viability of states. So do states, you know, have the, the you know, comparative advantage to exist theoretically as single states? How do I have it faring with regards to, you know, their domestic resource mobilization capacity? Are they overly dependent on federal transfers? What would be the fate of this state if you know there's a decline in what is coming from the center? And we're also looking at the, the current conversations around the minimum wage and what that uh, portends for the states. Because we see that a lot of those conversations are happening at the federal government level. But the truth is, a lot more workers you know work in the state, and uh, labor is not really engaging the state as we expect. As I speak to you, there are still some states that pay a minimum wage of 18 percent uh, of 18,000. There are some states that even pay a percentage of that 18,000 to their workers. What is labor doing about that? You know, at the different uh, at the state level. And so the conversations that are ongoing about uh, the minimum wage have to be a lot more robust. Has to be decentralized because at the end of the day, what is agreed that you know by the federal government from history, what we've seen, uh, some states do not get to. Uh, you know, implement what has been agreed with the federal government. And that's why we think that this com these negotiations should be decentralized. The different arms of labor should be having the same negotiations with the state, state government vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, their fiscal bandwidth to be able to pay whatever they're able to arrive at, you know, as the case may be. Brilliant conversation as usual. Mr. Inyobong Hussein is the head research and policy adversary with budget. Thank you so much for your time and do have a great weekend. Thank you, Tolu, for having me and have a lovely afternoon. All right. There.